I guess the only thing that actually stays the same is that things are always changing. Interesting. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 unanswered questions in the Big Bang Theory. So everybody knows what's in that letter except for me? For this list, we're looking at questions we all might have about TV's favorite geek squad after the show ended. If you haven't seen the show in its entirety, there will be spoilers. Do you have a theory on where these characters ended up? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. What was the deal with Howard's dad? One of the ongoing story elements of The Big Bang Theory was how Howard dealt with his father's departure. In numerous episodes throughout the show's run, we learned that Howard's dad left him and his mom when he was a kid. Where's my daddy puppet? <laughs> he never saw his father nor heard from him at any point afterwards. During a season six episode, Sheldon uncovers a letter to Howard detailing what happened, but Howard doesn't want to know. Howard, did you want to know what's in the letter? If I wanted to know, I would have opened it years ago. <laughs> The gang opts to give him six different stories about his dad, with one being true. It provides the audience and Howard their own Schrodinger's cat. We all both know and don't know the answer at the same time. Which one do you think it is? Matey? <laughs> Actually, I don't want to know. I want all of them to be true. Well, one of them is. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Number 19. Does Stuart become successful? He may not go down in history as having won a Nobel Prize or visiting the International Space Station, but Stuart Bloom does start to see some success as the show comes to a close. We were looking for a recommendation about comic books. Oh, well, I recommend you don't open a store and sell them. <laughs> After losing his comic book store to a fire, it comes back better than ever. It even brings love into his life when he hires Denise. I mean, the HAVWA5 turbo tank has metal gripping wheels, but I wouldn't call them tires. You are so hot. <laughs> so inevitably we wonder, does Stuart find any other successes in his life later on? Does he turn his store into a franchise and take down Capital Comics? Or does he come back to his artistic side and become a professional comic book illustrator? We hope his turn for the better continues for many years. Look at me, I'm 37. I sleep in the back of a comic book store and I have the bone density of an 80 year old man. <laughs> Number 18, what kind of parents are Leonard and Penny? In the final episodes of the show, we learned that Leonard and Penny were expecting their first child. Why don't we just tell people? No, it's too early. I haven't even wrapped my head around it. I have, my head is wrapped. Yeah, well. <laughs> something else had been wrapped we wouldn't be in this situation. <laughs> this came as a shock to viewers, as Penny didn't seem enthusiastic about the idea. The question is, would you like to have kids? So yeah, we want kids. Yeah, someday. Right, like in the next five years. Sure, the next question? After hearing her go back and forth on the idea several times, learning that she would definitely become a mom was certainly a huge surprise. That just leaves the mystery of how they'd be as parents. Neither of them had conventional upbringings. I see, so you're here to tell me all the ways that I failed you as a mother. Yeah, and get comfortable, because it's a long list. Both Leonard's relationship with his mom and Penny's relationship with her dad certainly had their ups and downs. Well, that, that hurts me deeply. I'm sorry, Let Daddy. Let me finish. Oh. However, given the love between the couple and what they learned from their own pasts, we're confident they became fantastic parents. Number 17, what was Penny's sister like? Unlike the rest of her family, audiences never got to meet Penny's sister Lisa. First mentioned in season one, we don't come to learn much about her even after 12 seasons. I mean, all right, my sister shot her husband, but it was an accident, they were drunk. <laughs> what we do know is that she apparently shot her husband by accident while intoxicated, had her water break during the father-daughter dance at her wedding, and she's apparently quite adept at finding personal information on the internet about Penny's love life. My friends at work found it, my sister found it, judging by my email, a number of prisoners at the Michigan State Penitentiary found it. <laughs> Given what little information we do know, it sounds like she's got as much spunk to her as Penny. However, much like Leonard's siblings, the true nature of Lisa's personality will likely remain an unsolved mystery. Number 16. What happened to Stephanie? With so much emphasis on Leonard's adoration for Penny, it's easy to forget the other women he becomes involved with. One shining example is Stephanie Barnett. Things between you and me have been going pretty quick. And? It's just a little scary. 
Oh, yeah, but scary good, right? Sure. <laughs> when is scary not good? She and Leonard become romantically attached shortly after Leonard drives her home from a date with Howard. Even after Leonard texts her about not wanting to live together, it seems like things would continue, yet she never reappears. I'll never have sex again. <laughs> Oh, I was wrong. See ya. <laughs> no on-screen breakup ever occurs, and unlike other exes in Leonard's life, she's never even mentioned again. Did not living together ultimately become a deal-breaker, or was it just time for the writers to shift things back to Penny? We're guessing the latter is true. She's heard about you because we're, you know, involved, and, and you haven't heard about her because... I never slept with her, I swear. <laughs> Number 15. What kind of father does Sheldon become? Can you imagine someone like Sheldon as a dad? Through the events of young Sheldon, we learn that Sheldon and Amy have a son named Leonard. I wanted his name to be Leonard Nimoy Cooper, but Amy wouldn't let me. Be happy I let you name him Leonard. Okay, okay. Given Sheldon's precarious history with his own father, fans became worried he might repeat some of those parenting patterns. I always wanted my dad to build rockets with me, but he wasn't interested. Ah, uh, yes. Disappointing fathers. Tell me about it. When it comes to Sheldon, however, we know that he can change his worldviews. For the 12 years we saw him on television, he came to grow far beyond his original struggles. Really? You thought about our kids? Of course. I think you and I will have exceptional children. We'd like to think that, as a father, he'd give his son everything he didn't get as a young child. Number 14. Does Alfred ever visit Mary after meeting at the wedding? Perhaps one of the most unexpected yet hilarious moments from the pre-wedding dinner is what unfolds between two parents. So after your husband passed, you never remarried? No, just focused on work and the church. Uh, and what do you do? I work at the church. <laughs> As Leonard's father Alfred leaves the dinner, Sheldon's mother Mary accompanies him. With the two intending to share a nightcap together, speculation unfolds among the boys as to what's going to happen. I don't like this at all. <laughs> I don't like it either. Really? Because <laughs> I love it! <laughs> we learn the next day the two have become friends and hope to visit each other in the near future. Which, of course, begs the question, whatever happened between these two? The possibilities of where that story could have gone are endless. Maybe young Sheldon will give us a hint at whether these two ever ended up together. Number 13. Is Penny happy? Of all the characters on this show, Penny could be described as the one who's both grown the most, yet struggled the hardest with happiness. I finally realized I don't need to be famous or have some big career to be happy. Then what do you need? You, you stupid Pop-Tart! <laughs> For a long time, she thinks fame from an acting career will make her happy, but finds herself floundering in such a field. Her struggle to find happiness extends further into her relationship with Leonard, her new career in pharmaceuticals, and eventually the idea of becoming a mother. So, when all is said and done, does she ever really find true happiness? Stuart once says, Together you two kind of make one awesome person. Oh, Stuart. Which makes a good case for her future. After struggling so much with finding happiness, is Leonard, her baby, and career success enough to finally make her happy? So, do you wanna? <laughs> well, I can't get more pregnant. Mm. We'll see about that. Uh -huh. <laughs> Number 12. What are Sheldon and Amy doing post-Nobel? Uh, the Nobel Committee will be making the calls to inform the winners at any minute. So the only drug I need is the endorphins pumping through my brain in anticipation of our victory. In the final season of The Big Bang Theory, both Sheldon and Amy are nominated for a Nobel Prize. After an early morning phone call, they learn they have won, and the gang celebrates. Oh my god! <laughs> we did it! I know. Can you believe it? <gasps> That's a good point. What if I'm dreaming? <laughs> we won the Nobel Prize! Since the episode ends with Amy and Sheldon receiving their award, we're not given any clues as to the direction their careers take. What exactly comes next after you've won a Nobel Prize in the world of science? Given Sheldon's lifelong obsession with the Nobel, it leaves the door open to a lot of possibilities once he's crossed that item off his list. The best we can hope for is a hint in a future episode of Young Sheldon. 
I have no doubt that that will be the case. Number 11. What happened with Howard's half-brother? We hear countless times over the show's run about how Howard's father left the family. Yeah, well, my quality father's son time was spending my adolescence looking out the window waiting for my dad to come back someday. So, it was a big surprise to learn that Sam Wallowitz had an entire other life with additional children. Are you saying you're my half-brother? I think so. Bernadette, weird things are happening out here! <laughs> In season eight, we meet Howard's half-brother Josh, who shows up unexpectedly at his home. After a bit of a rough start, the two hit it off and seemingly intend to continue to learn more about each other. And then, nothing. Viewers never see Josh nor hear his name spoken for the rest of the show's run. Fans are left to make up their own interpretation of how this new sibling bond evolves. You are my brother. <laughs> Number 10. Does Sheldon ever change? Even up to the very last episode of the show, Sheldon is often portrayed as being quite self-centered and condescending. I realize I can go to your aunt's awful party and still spend the whole day gaming with my friends. Both Amy and his friends tolerate his behavior knowing full well he never intends any ill will towards those closest to him. In the final episode, Sheldon comes to realize just how hurtful he can be and chooses to share his Nobel spotlight with his extended family. I have been encouraged, sustained, inspired, and tolerated not only by my wife, but by the greatest group of friends anyone ever had. It begs the question as to whether or not this major moment in his life causes him to change. We're given a peek at him through the eyes of young Sheldon, but it's still unknown as to whether he ever tames his omnipotent attitude. Of course, nobody I knew in East Texas in 1989 cared about Newtonian physics. <laughs> the only Newtons they cared about were Wayne and Fig. Number 9. What happens to Amy's apartment after the repairs are done? When Amy's apartment needs to undergo some work, she adopts Penny's old place and begins her five-week mission of living with Sheldon. I accept this five-week mission to share a living space with my girlfriend. <gasps> but once the repairs to Amy's place are complete, the two of them agree to remain there permanently. Are you saying you'd like to live with me? I'm open to the possibility. We never see or hear anything about Amy's old apartment afterwards. Sure, they agree to stay, but much of their apartment continues to be Penny's old stuff. What happens to all of Amy's things, or even the apartment itself? It would have been quite funny to watch the two debate over what stuff Amy's gonna keep versus things Sheldon doesn't want anywhere near the apartment. Of course, there's, there's always your apartment. Sure, sure, we, we could live in my apartment. I hate your apartment. <laughs> Number 8. What did Howard's mom look like? Howard, it's the phone! <laughs> No, it's the phone, Ma. I hear the phone! Well, who's calling at this ungodly hour? Over the course of the entire show, Howard's mom was a bit of a running gag. Like Vera's unseen face on Cheers, Debbie Wallowitz was a character we never saw, but certainly heard. Howard, are you having a play date? <laughs> Don't have play dates! I have colleagues! Do their parents know they're here? <laughs> If you keep screaming, maybe they'll hear you! <laughs> Portrayed as an overprotective and obnoxious mother, Debbie Wallowitz was in the show up until season eight. The character was retired after her voice actress, Carol Ann Susie, tragically passed away. I didn't care for her yelling, but now that I'm not going to hear it again, I'm sad. If you want, I can yell at you later. <laughs> It won't be as good. With the character now absent from the show, the mystery of what she looked like would always be there. Keen observers have noted that a photo of Susie can be seen on the side of the fridge in the boys' apartment. It's a close hint at what she could have looked like, while still not being an outright confirmation. Number 7. What does Penny's future look like? When a show comes to an end, fans always hope that the writers find a way to give their characters a satisfying ending. So you're saying the inevitability of change might be a universal constant. Well, there's a little more to it than that, but yeah, sure. <laughs> By all accounts, Penny seems to be in a good place when things conclude. But how does it all play out? We mentioned before how she struggled to find happiness, so we wonder if that continues as she became a mother. Speaking of which, that was something she wasn't keen on being for such a long time, so how does that all play out? Okay, that's it for the fish. 
We'll be back with the meatballs after a short word from our sponsor. <laughs> oh, thank you. Does she keep her career in pharmaceuticals? Do she and Leonard stay together? Of all the characters on this show, Penny is likely the one whose life may have gone in a different direction. Can you believe it? They finally fixed the elevator. <laughs> Number six, will Raj ever get married? For six years of the show's run, Raj suffered through selective mutism whenever he was around women. This certainly caused his fair share of relationship issues. Even when he faced the issue head-on, his inability to maintain a long-term, stable relationship followed him until the series ended. It's been a long time since I've seen a girl's really not her shoulder. <laughs> it always seemed that Raj's biggest hurdle was his inner battle of wanting to be happy versus wanting to make someone else happy. When the show wrapped, Raj was still single, but content among his friends. Does he ever manage to find a girl who knows what Notting Hill was really about? And I don't think she's waiting for you in England. When you propose to someone in Notting Hill, it should be to someone who knows what that movie is. Number five, will Leonard's relationship with his mother improve? <laughs> Your mother's here! <laughs> Leonard's mom was introduced as a high-achieving academic with little regard for any accomplishment her son ever made. He spent his whole life trying to please his mother, while she ignored him. She thought this would all bring him strength, but instead, this parenting method merely created an emotional wall between the two. That's not really in my control, is it? <laughs> oh, uh, yes. As the show comes to an end, Leonard finally decides he's had enough and forgives her. I didn't ask you to forgive Too me. bad. I forgive you anyway. <laughs> and I forgive myself for taking so long to do it. It's there we see her give him his first real piece of affection, something he yearned for all along. Could this have been a sign of better things to come? Number four, does Howard ever get his PhD? Hello, boys. Dr. Gablehauser. Dr. Cooper Polly. Dr. Gablehauser. Dr. Hofstadter. Dr. Gablehauser. Dr. Cooper. Dr. Gablehauser. Mr. Wolowitz. <laughs> Early on, we learned that Howard received his master's degree from MIT, but did not get his doctorate. As much as he is accomplished as an engineer, it's never stopped his friends and colleagues from poking fun at his lack of a PhD. Sheldon, I'm more than smart enough to take your class. <laughs> no. <laughs> For a moment in season eight, we thought he might get there with help from Sheldon, but that didn't pan out. I am your professor, and you're going to treat me with the proper. <laughs> your spit in my mouth! <laughs> Is that gonna be on the test? Because I don't think I can do that again! <laughs> we wonder if Sheldon and Amy's Nobel win may have given Howard a bit of a push to earn his last degree. If so, he could finally be called Dr. Wallowitz. It would certainly be an improvement over Walla Wizard. Pasadena, <laughs> California, <laughs> Wallow Wizard. Awesome! <laughs> Number three, what was the deal with the pins on Howard's collar? Unlike many of the entries on this list, this one is one many may have overlooked. Oh damn, I picked the wrong side. Throughout the run of the show, Howard was seen sporting many turtlenecks. But have you ever noticed the little alien pin? That's what makes it get all funky. <laughs> In virtually every episode, Howard can be seen with one of these pins on his turtleneck. They change shapes, sizes, and colors from episode to episode, but nothing in show ever gives us a clue as to their meaning. In a behind-the-scenes clip, costume designer Mary T. Quigley did say there was a reason for them, but we never did learn what it was. And the infamous alien oh, pins yes. that are always on the turtleneck, and there is a meaning behind them, which we will not tell you, yes. but you can try to get. Number two. Did Howard ever reconcile with his dad? While often played for laughs, Howard's relationship with his estranged dad is also one that gives the show some of its best moments. Maybe he apologizes or explains why he left. He abandoned me and my mother. Why does he deserve a chance to explain anything? The entire letter episode shows how truly conflicted Howard is about his father. And given that he learns his dad has a whole other family, it would have been pretty easy for him to reach out and reconnect. Look at this! Photos of Wallowitz family before father left forever. 
But even with all of those small details, we never find out if Howard ultimately does try to reconcile with Sam. Given how emotionally heavy that would be, we can understand leaving it out. But that doesn't stop us from wondering what his dad may think of his son's accomplishments. Glad you're feeling better. Me too. If I'd known we were going to be dancing, I would have worn my flats. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. What is Penny's maiden name? After 279 episodes, you might have thought we'd know the full names of all the major characters. Since we've already memorized Kutherpali and Rostenkowski, you'd think the writers would have given us Penny's original last name. Big deal, not knowing is part of the fun. Not knowing is part of the fun, was that the motto of your community college? <laughs> Alas, this appears to be a question that they never really intended to answer. In fact, as time went on, it became a bit of a superstition to not give her a last name at all. Finally, there's a Mrs. Hofstetter who isn't disappointed in me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, the night is still young. <laughs> Fans have theorized about her name and have come up with several creative possibilities. However, the producers and writers have stood firm that this was a question they never really intended to answer. Thank you all for this high honor. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.